Uh, welcome to the most recent polls and pickups, uh, polls and pickup number nine, if I remember correctly. I asked about last time what you guys thought about me switching some things up, and uh, I didn't get a response, but I'll, uh, if, if you like what I'm going to do in this polls and pickups, tell me in the comments below. My plan is that to kind of keep things moving more and to keep these videos more brisk, I'm going to only show uh, back issues briefly. If I have something to say about them, I'll only talk about them briefly, and I'll move on. And then later on, if I actually have a lot to say about them, I'll feature them in their old, oh, in their own video, especially if there's a lot of them, because I've I have a, quite a bit of back issues here, but a lot of them are very similar, and I could just kind of do videos on their own, like covering them in more detail. And I don't exactly know if it's something that you guys would want to see in this series, you know, because these ish, these videos have been getting quite long, right? The last one was like 50 minutes long, so and they're getting harder and harder to put out at that length because um, and put out on time when they're at that length because of the slow upload speed, my slow internet speed. So anyways, uh, I'm, not, I'm just going to talk about these briefly, but if you're interested, tell me below if you'd rather have me talk about these issues. W would you want to have a, these, a separate series basically where I talk about back issues that I'm interested in and I have stuff to say about them, or would you rather have me talk about them in, the polls, in this polls and pickups? Um, so tell me below. So issue two of The Walking Dead, I got issue one in the last polls and pickups, so I picked up issue two as well. I hunt hunting down all the back issues I need to kind of fill out um, the deluxe collection so far, and this is issue three. So I had issue one, issue two, issue three here. Cool cover. Um, no, I'm not as big of a, I, I, like, I, I like the cover, but what's interesting is these, out of the very various variant covers, um, these ones... It's odd because the, the the way that things are laid out is different. Here's the next issue here that I have, which is issue five. Oh, here's issue four, but I'll I'll show off issue five right now because uh, a lot of issues, a lot of these issues have this kind of style um, going on. Uh, it looks like it's by the same guy going by the signature. I can't tell what the guy's name is by the signature. I'm not good at reading cursive, and it's quite. Uh, quite uh, fancy cursive, let's just say, um, but very similar covers there, and I'm fine with that, but the thing that kind of uh, irks me a little bit is that the the way that the this front uh, panel is laid out and the way the format is, um, you, you when you're looking through and you're pulling out your um, you know your box or whatever you can't see the issue number unless you pull it all the way out it's down at the bottom there and normally of course it's up at the top you know that's a normal thing in comics because then when you're it's sitting up in your box you can just when you're when you pull it out you can only you can pull it out only you know a few inches and you'll be able to see what you know see its image Walking Dead okay issue two there you go but if it's at the very bottom it's kind of um, you know kind of screws up the organization there, uh, but that's okay. Here's issue four. I like that cover there. Quite cool. Uh, issue four was a lot of fun. That was uh, really when the series started picking up in my mind. Um, and, you know, this cover is great. And then uh, issue issue five, I thought, I, yeah, issue five I already showed off there. Then here's issue six. So I have one through six now, plus I have seven, no, no, I have eight, nine, ten, and eleven, which eleven is the newest deluxe issue that has come out. Uh, Twelve is coming out next week, I believe. Next week? Yeah, I think so. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll be, um, you know, showing that off and such. And yeah, so those are, that's that. Next up, I got more back issues. We got a bunch of back issues. I've been going on eBay, been picking up quite a bit of lots here. And here's Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger is getting actually a, is it a movie or a TV show? <laughs> on TV show on Disney Plus. I think it's, I thought it was a movie. I forget. Something's announced. Something's been announced, uh, Cloak and Dagger related. And um, that's not why I picked these up. I actually was looking for a, another series of books that I'll, uh, comic books that I'll show in a minute. Um, but this was, it was in a lot. And the whole lot was quite cheap. I got this issue for what, like a dollar, I think it was? 70 something cents, 80 cents in terms of if you were to price each book out individually in the lot. Um, and of course, you got, you got to love these ads from back then. I don't really want to talk about this very far, but. Um, yeah, it's cool. I've got that. And issue six, cool cover there. I like that even better than the last cover, I think. Um, and then you got issue seven here. 
that's cool as well. Uh, kind of cheesy or funny that there's those sharks down below. And uh, let's look at the advertisements on the back. I always like looking at these advertisements. Um, they have their own little <laughs> ways ways to prevent sexual abuse. Okay, well, uh, who better to teach that than Spider-Man, right? <laughs> I guess. Um, and the Incredible Hulk there, that's cool. Anyway, so yeah, I uh, don't want to go on that that for too long. Uh, but if you're interested, I'll, I definitely think I want to show these off in a separate video. And actually, once, I'm, once I've actually read them, I'll talk about them in more detail. I think I'm going to do that. Um, but if you, if you are interested, definitely tell me so I know um, to do that kind of thing in the future. Or should I just be talking about them in polls and pickups? Um, I could talk about these in the next polls and pickups if you'd rather just have it that way. So uh, make sure and let me know. Uh, Dakota North, uh, this was actually what I got that lot for. Um, this was really what I was looking for, uh, kind of a uh, James Bond, female James Bond, almost Black Widow style story, uh, less dark than Black Widow. Um, I haven't actually read it yet, but um, yeah, it's kind of a forgotten series by Marvel from the mid to late 80s. It came out bi-monthly. That was one of the reasons why you could say it possibly failed, um, one of the reasons, and it's, yeah, it's espionage basically, so... Um, and it looked cool. It was cheap. It came in a lot with all these other um, heroin comics. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, issue 2 as well. Cool cover there. Let's look at the backs. I was, oh, yeah, there's the same back there. Um, oh, and this Yamaha ad. I've seen this before in other Marvel issues. This is a cool Yamaha ad. They don't, they don't make them like they used to. Cars, advertisements, comics. Um, <laughs> Seems like all the best stuff in the world is before I was born. Now that's probably because most of time exists before the present, right? Um, a majority of time, 99.9% .9 of all time is time before the present. <laughs> um, and that's the end of, uh, that was issue three. And that's the end of, oh, one more. Dazzler issue two. I definitely want to cover this in its own video as well, if you guys are interested. Um, I, I probably will by the time this video gets uploaded. This video will probably be by the time the video you're watching is out. So yeah, a very funny, very entertaining. Issue 2 is actually part of a two-part story arc. If you haven't read Issue 1, you probably should, but I hadn't, I hadn't read issue one at this from when reading this and I was still able to make out what's going on issues back then always did such a good job at informing the reader as to what went on in the past issue and making things easy for newcomers uh, you know possibly because uh, at the time that was kind of the the, the style and something that uh, you know even Stan Lee uh, talked about which was that any comic can be someone's first comic or it should be able to you should say uh, nowadays it's that's not always the case. This is issue 13. We're going to new issues now. These, this was an issue I showed off before, and I'm going to give you my non-spoiler-based non, -spoilers, non -spoiler -based thoughts first. I don't have a ton, but I'm trying to keep this video brief. You know, I don't want it to go to 50 minutes like before. Jeez, 50 minutes? Crazy. So I, don't, I want to keep it lighter than that. But uh, this issue, as you can see, the color is great, just like always. Uh, I quite like the art that's in these issues, and it seems quite consistent in terms of art as well. Um, it, it slouched a little bit, I think, on issue, is it 7 and 8? seven and eight uh when, uh when i think that's the story arc the short story arc where um thor's hammer continued to increase in uh weight uh but those issues were a little bit off in terms of art if i remember correctly don't quote me on that but uh overall though these issues more than just having good art these issues are quite uh, this series is quite consistent in having good art compared to something like daredevil where i quite like the art in daredevil as well but off and on every you know handful of issues it'll switch up and go to the b artist um so, and that kind of irks me a little bit, um, and that's like, you know, I, I love that series, don't get me wrong, but yeah, and I'm showing, trying to show you off s some things here, but I don't want to go too far because this is kind of a spoiler-heavy issue, but basically, uh, uh, you kind of know from, you know from the cover, does it, no, you don't really know from the cover, anyways, a, a certain character... Maybe you already saw as I was flipping through here, but there's some returns. Yeah, there's some returns. You probably already know. Uh, Odin is back, um, and he's, you know, back and better than ever. He's coming back on his feet, him and Jane Foster. Uh, he, Jane Foster, in the last issue, recruited him or told him to, you know, get out from the hole that he uh, had left himself in, so to speak, and it needs him to fight off 
Donald Blake. And she basically has amassed an army, and this whole issue, for the most part, is just one big battle. It's nonstop fighting, sort of. Uh, there's some, you know, cool dialogue and scenes in between, and it, it's, it's really awesome. Um, there's some cool reveals, and the art is great, as always, and it's, it was nonstop action. Even better than the issue before. The issue before felt kind of like they were retreading ground, despite, uh, it, this is issue 13, right? Uh, but issue 12 felt like they were retreading some old ground. Uh, it was action-packed but it almost felt like it was too action-packed. Uh, this, though, was, even though it was more action-packed than that last issue, it felt like it needed it. It felt like this was kind of what you were waiting for. It didn't feel like we were kind of dawdling over things we already knew, like in the last issue. Despite me loving the last, it, or loving, really liking the last issue, it felt kind of like we were already covering ground that we knew it was already doing things that we already knew about. Um, it was talking about and detailing things that we were like, yeah, we know this. But um, anyways, um, but yeah, this issue was even better than before. I'm loving it. But what exactly is, you know, what how, what exactly is going on in the story? And uh, what do I think of some more nitty gritty details? Well, spoilers start now. Thor issue 13 covers the return of Odin. Odin had found himself staring down at the end of the uh, end of a bottle, so to speak, in a uh, you know galaxy far, far away in some other realm. And when Jane Foster found him, uh, they actually got in a small feud, um, as you can see here. And uh, you can see he got his hair cut. He looks a little bit different, but um, uh, they're fighting very briefly. Uh, I, don't, I, mean, I don't even know if it's much of a scuffle, really, but um, basically she tells him what's going on, and it's funny how his personality totally changes. He's He doesn't want to deal with her. He says that uh, Thor can be out on his own, and uh, Thor can take care of himself, and is now the king, and, you know, once he... Odin basically rel relinquished his both his... Um, powers his level of power that he had as odin but also relinquished his uh kingship to thor um so after that he kind of um we figure out why it's because of a, his wife uh the the prince princess uh queen i should say queen of asgard and her death and um after that that's what uh led him to uh, be where he is now like i said looking at the end of a little, uh you know galaxy far far away staring down at the end of a bottle and uh, drowning his sorrows but um after he hears that uh odin uh, after he hears that asgard has fallen and that you know he's the only hope in stopping donald blake then he con you know changes his tune basically instantly and joins jane foster and knows that you know he has to do what he has to do and um despite him not having his powers that he had before he still is powerful you know he's not he's not the most powerful god ever anymore after he because of like i said he transferred his powers to thor but he's still powerful enough to um get the job done so to speak or we're assuming right we don't get to actually see donald blake um destroyed yet and he, uh, donald blake still seems to have some cards underneath his uh sleeve so to speak and uh Doctor Strange also gets to join the fight. Uh, Loki talks about some past issues and kind of uh, quarrel that he supposedly had with Doctor Strange. I don't that wasn't in this series, so I don't exactly know what he's referring to. But uh, that's kind of interesting, and it wasn't it was vague enough for you to not exactly know what's going on. But there was enough details where the exchange still felt genuine, the exchange still felt good and quality. Um, Donald Blake is actually cutting down the is it the Tree of Life? I forget exactly what it's called. Um, but but that giant tree in Asgard, if you've ever seen any of the movies or uh, read some of the comics, you'll know what I'm talking about. And uh, he's, uh, you know, covering himself in the sap and trying to absorb the power. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, Jane Foster really did. I was right. What I said was definitely true. Jane Foster did amass an army, as you can see. And... Um, yeah, uh, she's not pulling any punches, so to speak. Nobody's pulling any punches. And, you know, the battle commences, as I talked about, and uh, you basically figure out the, the reveal, big reveal, is that the sap that from the tree that he was cutting down sinks into the ground and actually the area that the realm that Thor was trapped within is actually right below the tree. So that sap sinks through the soil and is able to then give Thor the power. You know, he's uh, you can tell that he, he he messed up big time, and you can see that uh, Thor is then able to get enough power from that sap to then uh, break out. Oh well, well, no, he was able to. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I almost. No, he he didn't. 
Well, I mean, he, yeah, yeah, he didn't break out physically, so to speak, but he was able to uh, call out, he was able to break uh, part of the realm or something, and uh, his ravens, uh, Odin's ravens that are now his, were able to make their way through and transfer his spirit uh, out of the realm, and he was able to take on another form, which is... And basically, he was able to possess uh, a sentient uh, magic, magical piece of armor known as the Destroyer. I didn't uh, know that initially. I had to look that up. It's not explained. Uh, so I kind of wish they did mention a little bit of that. But it, it's basically the same kind of thing as uh, the whole uh, Throg thing when there was the reveal that um, Thor, Frog, uh, F Frog Thor, or whatever was going to be uh, in these issues. That was like two issues ago, I think. Three issues ago when that was a reveal. I think two issues ago. Um, so it was kind of similar in that sense where it's, uh, he's bringing back Donald, Donny Cates is once again bringing back, uh, the old and making it new again in the Thor series. And, um, despite it being a little confusing for someone like me, that's not super versed in Thor. I mean, I've read a, quite a number of Thor comics, you know, maybe, maybe 40 or 50, but not enough to know a lot of the characters that he's bringing in. But in a way that makes things more, you know, we live in the modern internet age. So, um, you know, because of things like the internet, it's not really a big deal to have to look up who a character is and that makes things interesting uh constantly bringing back things from the past and it it just makes things a lot more exciting overall great issue uh even better than the issue before and i'm really looking forward to how this turns out i think it's yeah part five of six so there's only one more issue to go so this is exciting i'm excited to re read more and this week um at the time of me, me recording this is when the uh, Thor miniseries is coming out, which is centers around Beta Ray Bill. So I'm going to be covering that too in the next polls and pickups. So look forward to that. This is Alien issue one. This is the first issue in a uh, yeah an ongoing an ongoing series. Uh, originally, a the Alien series was. Uh, manned by Dark Horse Comics, I believe. Uh, but after Marvel bought out Fox, uh, they acquired, and you know, Disney of course owns, owns Marvel, so now Marvel has the rights to be able to uh, reprint those old issues and make new ones. And this is the new series that they're doing. Also in a few months from now, in June, July, I think it's July, they're also doing the Predator series. So it'll be cool to see how these two relate. Um, I'm probably gonna, I'll probably give that a shot and you can see Bishop here. And I, I was quite excited to read this. Um, I actually rewatched uh, the first two Alien movies specifically to get myself hyped for this. But was it worth it? Not exactly. I'm not gonna give spoilers yet here, but no, it, it, it was it wasn't a bad issue, um, but certain elements of it felt kind of contrived and forced, and other elements just kind of felt um, too kind of predictable. I guess I should say it wasn't bad at all. There was there was a bit of action. There was definitely a lot of dialogue and kind of interesting di dynamics. The characters that they're setting up are interesting enough, and but certain ones, basically his son is so. I don't know what, what word I want to use here. It's so kind of annoying and uh, archetypal and, uh, again, contrived, I guess is the word. Contrived. He just, I don't know, very unlikable and... Um, I, I don't want to, he ties into the big reveal at the end. I'll just leave it at that until I talk about spoilers. But he ties into the reveal at the end. And this reveal, again, felt very forced and kind of artificial. But, you know, you got to, you, you can't have things without that ending. You wouldn't have had the crap hit the fan and you kind of need the crap to hit the fan. But I think they could have gotten to the same result that the ending has without without kind of doing what they did here. Um, but was it was it enjoyable? Yeah, it was enjoyable. Should you read it? If you're interested in the Alien series, uh, you should give it a shot. But don't don't get have your expectations too high. It's a five dollar issue. It's one more dollar more than uh, you know the normal standard price. So that's a little steep. But um, overall, I, I think you should hop on. Right? It's it's there's enough promise in this issue to make it uh, worth hopping on. I think. But if you're not really crazy about Alien, or if none of this looks too interesting, then yeah, I would I wouldn't hop into it. But if you're interested, once again, I, I don't think this is. I don't think this is a bad place to hop in. Um, it is the first issue, so um, we'll see how it turns out. Getting into spoilers. Spoilers in three, two, one. Okay, so the ending basically was... So, so the overall story centers around 
this fatherly figure of that kid that I uh, showed, and he's retiring from uh, retiring from the organization, the space organization, um, uh, building new worlds. What's it called? Um, the Ying Yutani, excuse me, uh, Wayland Yutani uh, Corporation, and he's retiring after a mission gone wrong, and. Uh, you basically the, the whole story takes place the, the, you you get to see flashbacks to that you, you never get to see what happened but it's kind of an interesting way to have you be in he you know he, he goes back to earth and everything and is trying to basically uh, rekindle his uh, relationship with his son and deal with the kind of PTSD and past traumas of his uh, you know his excursion that where he ran into I assume you know uh, xenomorphs so and it's things are a lot of things are hinted at um, and it's kind of interesting because it's it's a different take right you don't you don't see it happen and then you see it's kind of left in mystery and that mystery kind of adds to it a bit because there's certain elements something happened to one of his other sons and um basically towards the end it kind of is suggested that oh, oh well kind of towards the end plus um along with the cover to issue two i don't exactly know if he's a like property of the corporation like if he's he's been um I, I have no clue, but the, from the way it's something happened, something horrendous happened to him, and he's basically stuck on Epsilon Station, which is their um, space station that uh, the company that he works for uh, owns is their space station. That's the gist of what I got um, involving his son, and supposedly it seems as if it might tie back into that uh, horrific event that happened to the dad there, and his other son is a freedom fighter that um, is trying to stop Epsilon from um, uh, experimenting on and researching the xenomorphs and in a way you're like well that's good but the way he does you're like oh so that's good what, what is he going to do is he going to protest um, maybe he's going to try and you know uh, run for office and uh, figure out no no he goes in with his uh, with his team of freedom fighters and blows some people innocent people's heads off um, as you can see here and uh, he, he says, oh, that wasn't necessary. Um, oh, he's, he's so unlikable. The way he, he treated his father and the whole thing about how you, you, the guy's like the, the biggest jerk imaginable. Um, he's just not likable at all. I know he's supposed to, I, I mean, he's probably supposed to be kind of the antagonist, but in another way, he's so closely tied to the father, which seems like our main character, that... I don't know, it just, and his, his, the motives and everything, like, if you're going to have a have him be a bad guy, at least make his motives seem more real, but they don't seem real at all. He should have freaked out when the freedom fighters that he works with killed the guy and be like, oh, this is the first time you ever did something like this. We, you never said we'd go this far, that kind of thing. Something like that, but no, it's, he's just cold and, um doesn't give a rats about anything and that would be fine if he was like a big super villain but he's supposed to be just be a normal son and having if there was other elements as to why he is the way he is then other elements of depth then that would be okay if he was this cold but there's not um so basically they break in and these freedom fighters of course uh just like you know the beginning of 28 days later or something they um unleash that they they're like oh you uh, open this door open this door no we can't you don't understand they're like no we're gonna shoot you so they open the door and uh, xenomorphs come out uh, face huggers and stuff and basically they unleash hell so yeah um and that whole element i mean this hat the again that the crap had to hit the fan at one point and it's an alien series you got to have something happen to unleash these aliens and have problems arise but the way they got to this doesn't really work it's it's so stereotypical having it where oh the, the you know the the guys that think that they're good are actually bad and they're the ones that caused the problem that they were trying to stop all along but I don't know, it just, it felt forced and not natural at all, and the, the people that are supposed to be bad feel like caricatures of, um, you know, something that they're supposed to be actual villains. Um, but despite that, I, I did like the issue, as I kind of said before, I mentioned the spoilers, but that was the main, main big gripe I had with this. Um, again, I think it's worth picking up, but, um, and, and I think a big part of that is because of the promise of what's to come. 
but uh, as a, in terms of it being a first issue by itself, it's not. It, it wasn't nearly as good as I wanted it to be, but it was still it was still pretty decent. It, I'd even say enjoyable, but um, it, it had it had a lot of room to grow. But that's the thing. I think just like a uh, non-stop Spider-Man, which I covered, I think two fulls makeups go, one fulls makeups go. I'll put the card in the top right. Um, just like with that issue, it seems as if. It seems as if there's uh, more. It's more about the promise as opposed to the issue itself, and that was it. I try to go through this at a faster rate, and and I hope you enjoyed it. Again, uh, leave some feedback in the comments below, please. I'd love to know what you guys think I should do. do you, did you like the way I formatted this? Should I talk more about these back issues? Are you interested in seeing a video where I uh, cover issues one through six here of The Walking Dead? Um, kind of like the first trade, so to speak. Should I should I do like plot synopsis? Uh, should I just review them? Uh, show off certain elements of them? What, what do you think? Dazzler? I'm definitely probably going to show off that. Um, and yeah, I, I, I showed off quite a bit, but I tried to do it at a fast rate. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyways, thank you for watching and aloha.